Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. If justice uh, were don't think it, it would be better served cold than to be not served at all. And in a country where belief in a fair go is in our DNA, the quest for justice should never fade. That's why 120 years after the fact, there remains a strong desire amongst many people, some of my parliamentary colleagues included, for one of our national legends to receive long overdue justice. In February, it'll be 120 years since the execution of Harry Morant, better known as Breaker Morant, and Peter Hancock, as well as the sentencing of their colleague, George Whitten, to life imprisonment. Their trials and executions have been the subject of great conjecture in Australian history, as well as the subject of stories, books, ballads, a screenplay, and the 1980 movie titled Breaker Morant. Harry Morant established himself as quite a character from very early on in life, undoubtedly an expert horseman, reportedly a womaniser, and perhaps a little loose with the truth about his past and legendary exploits. Depending on which stories you believe, he may have even been a bit of a scoundrel. But being larger than life, or indeed being a scoundrel, does not make justice any less deserved. Even in times of conflict on foreign soil, everyone should be entitled to due process and equality before the law. Morant, Hancock and Whitten were not tried in accordance with the military law of the time, 1902 we're talking about. Their convictions were likely unlawful and their sentences likely illegal as they were not afforded an opportunity to appeal, which was a right enshrined in law in 1902. There was a failure to implement the court's martial recommendations of mercy and there were denials of proper opportunity to consult legal counsel before trial, right to communicate with witnesses and next of kin and right to communicate with the Australian government of 1902 to seek intervention and support. Now, Australians have always held in high regard the men and women putting their lives on the line by defending our freedoms on foreign soil. But not all Australians show the same respect today that they once did. There are those in the media and amongst the elites who despise our nation and those who fight to protect it. In 2016, some rumours were enough to launch an investigation conducted by New South Wales Supreme Court Judge Paul Brereton to answer questions of unlawful conduct concerning the Special Operations Task Group in Afghanistan. What followed was a media and anti-military pylon besmirching not only the subjects of the rumours but an entire class of people. You might recall the Chinese Foreign Ministry official Li Jian Zhao posted to Twitter a photoshopped image depicting an Australian soldier holding a knife to the neck of an Afghani child. And when the Brereton report was released, the entire Special Air Service's second squadron was completely disbanded, tarnishing the reputation of every single member, whether a subject of that report or not. And when you read the report, it found that the rumours, the allegations and suspicions around 39 alleged incidents were, quote, unquote, not substantiated while the inquiry found quote-unquote credible information about 23 incidents, it said this about that credible information. There can of course be credible information of a matter warranting further investigation, even if there is also credible information to the contrary. A finding that there is credible information of a matter is not a finding that the matter is proved. But the trial by media and public persecution of our soldiers had already been conducted. A whole squadron was treated as if it was guilty and sentenced to a tarnished reputation, regardless of what outcomes may yet come out of any legal proceedings. So 120 years on, we still have Australian soldiers being judged unfairly and not afforded due process. But justice, as I said, is better served cold than never being served at all. We can still afford Breaker Morant, Peter Hancock and George Whitten the legal processes they deserved at that time. That's why I'm calling on the government to initiate an independent review into those allegations, the evidence, the trial and the legal processes to determine if justice was properly served and whether those three Australian soldiers really were just scapegoats. I know many people have spoken about a pardon and descendants of these men would be happy, extremely happy, to have their ancestors exonerated. But at the very least, we should give them the courtesy of proper due process and properly investigate the circumstances that led to the execution of Morant and Hancock. And if an independent review finds grounds for an exoneration, then a pardon from the Australian government for those men who served their country in the Boer War would be the appropriate course of action.